session of the human anatomy series and today the topic of my discussion will be about the dural venous sinuses so these are the du there are dural venous sinuses which are present in the skull and there are certain dural sinuses which are paired and there are certain which are unpaired so today the topic of my discussion will be about one of the dural venous sinuses which is a paired dural venous sinus that is the cavernous sinus so this video will mainly focus upon about the boundaries and the contents of the cavernous sinus so students beginning with as to what is the cavernous sinus so students cavernous sinus is a large venous space so students make this point very clear cavernous sinus that is it is since it is a paired sinus so each cavernous sinus is a large venous space situated in the middle cranial fossa situated in the middle cranial fossa on either side of the body of the sphenoid bone so students the uh, sphenoid bone it is the site where the cavernous sinuses are located so cavernous sinus these are paired with dural venous sinuses which are located in the body of the sphenoid bone on either side of the body of the sphenoid bone so students while looking at the boundaries of the cavernous sinus so this is the schematic diagram what i have made to simplify about the boundaries of the cavernous sinus so students as you can all see the cavernous sinus since it's a large venous space so any space is going to be bounded by a particular space is bounded by mostly it is just a like a similar structure to a room just as a room is going to have a floor a roof and the lateral walls similarly the dural venous sinus that is the paired cavernous sinus each cavernous sinus is going to have a roof of it a floor of it and the lateral walls so students in particular when talking of the cavernous sinus the cavernous sinus the floor of the cavernous sinus it is formed by the end osteal layer of the dura mater since the what is the dura mater it is the many covering of the brain the brain is covered by three layers that is the dura mater arachnoid and the pia mater so the floor of the cavernous sinus it is formed by the end osteal layer of the dura mater so students do remember the floor of the cavernous sinus it is formed by the end osteal layer of the dura mater whereas the roof the lateral walls and the medial walls they are formed by the meningeal layer of the dura mater so students do remember since the dura mater it is the outermost covering of the three uh, layers of the three coverings of the brain that is the dura mater arachnoid and the pia mater these are the three protective coverings of the brain so the dura mater the cavernous sinus the roof the floor of the dura mater the floor of the cavernous sinus it is formed by the layer of the dura mater which is lying in close proximity to the end ostium that is the end ostium of the cranium of the cranial vault so the end ostial layer which is strictly which is lying very close to the end ostium of the skull so the dura mater the layer the end ostial layer of the dura mater is forming the floor of the cavernous sinus whereas the meningeal layer so which is lying in close proximity to the meninges the layer of the dura mater which is going to lie in close proximity to the meninges it is called as the meningeal layer of the dura mater and this meningeal layer of the dura mater it is going to form the roof the roof and the lateral walls as i have shown in this diagram so these are the lateral walls so the lateral walls and the roof of the cavernous sinus it is formed by the meningeal layer of the dura mater so students moving on to the Uh, contents what are going to uh, lie either in superiorly 
inferiorly the contents what i'll be talking of the uh, contents what are lying or what are the contents which are going to lie in close proximity to the cavernous sinus so students beginning with the contents so firstly when talking of the contents what are going to lie outside the sinus so the contents what are going to lie outside the sinus that is superiorly so if this is the sinus the contents what are going to lie superiorly it is the first is the optic tract next is the internal carotid artery and the anterior perforating substance so these are the structures what are going to lie to superiorly to the cavernous sinus so students the mnemonic or the short trick what i have made to easily remember as to what are the structures what are going to lie superiorly to the cavernous sinus is the aios that is the aos so AIOS that is the anterior perforating substance the internal carotid artery the optic tract and the S of the superiorly so these are the structures which are going to lie superiorly to the cavernous sinus moving on to the structures which are found outside the sinus but lying inferiorly so inferiorly it is the foramen lacerum and the junction of the body and the greater wing of the sphenoid so students the structures what are going to lie inferiorly to the cavernous sinus it is the foramen lacerum and the junction of the body and the greater wing of the sphenoid moving on to the structures what are going to lie outside the cavernous sinus but they are lying laterally so it is the temporal lobe with uncus which is lying laterally to the cavernous sinus and moving on to the structure which is going to lie outside but medial to the cavernous sinus it is the hypophysis cerebri that is the pituitary gland the hypophysis cerebri is another name for the pituitary gland and the sphenoidal air sinus and the sphenoidal air sinus so students do remember so these are the contents what are going to lie outside the sinus superiorly inferiorly laterally and medially moving on to the next that is the contents what the structures what are going to lie in the xt uh, in the lateral walls of the cavernous sinus so students do remember the structures what are going to lie in the lateral wall can be better remember so this is the lateral wall what i have drawn over here so as you can see this is the lateral wall so the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus it the structures what pass through it it is the third cranial nerve that is the ocular motor nerve the fourth cranial nerve that is the trochlea the fifth cranial nerve the first division of the fifth cranial nerve that is the uh, the, the fifth uh, division the first division of the fifth cranial nerve that is the ophthalmic nerve and the second division of the trigeminal nerve that is the maxillary nerve and the trigeminal ganglion so students these are the structures what are present in the lateral wall of the sinus so the structures what are passing laterally are the third fourth the fifth the first division of the trigeminal nerve the second division of the trigeminal nerve that is the ophthalmic and the maxillary nerve and finally the trigeminal ganglion so these are the structures what are lying laterally in the in the lateral wall of the cavernous sinus moving on to the structures which pass through the center of the cavernous sinus so the students do remember it is only two structures what are passing through the center of the cavernous sinus it is the internal carotid artery and the sixth cranial nerve that is the abducent nerve so students this was a short discussion about the contents and the boundaries of the cavernous sinus which is a paired dural venous sinus so students if you do like my video don't forget to subscribe my channel and do press the bell icon so that you can be further updated for the upcoming videos thank you for watching